and we're live. Just like that. That was, that was great. Just like that. Uh, today on the show, we have Francisco. How do you say your last name? Rincon. Rincon. Francisco Rincon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's pretty good. Very great pronunciation. Yes. Um, you know a guy uh, who might own a horse. I, I <laughs> might. If you, didn't, if you don't mind, will you adjust your mic towards yourself a little bit? I want to make sure everybody can hear you. Hear that? Fucking sexy, yeah. That sexy Latin accent. Hopefully, you can find uh, the subtitle. The uh, how do you call it? Yeah, yeah. subtitle. So people can. Uh, <laughs> what I'm saying. It is. It is very swarthy. Yeah. Swarthy <laughs> accent there. Also uh, on the show today, uh, today uh, Patno Productions' own from the mean streets of Colleen. Not no right, gangster, gangster, gang, gang. Connor King the Second. It's me, guys. What's going on? What's up? That's that's my day one right there. That's my day <laughs> one chilling. comic. Are we out here thugging? We, we have been out here thugging. We have. So, um, Francisco. What's happening? What's going on in your life? How are things been? Uh, let's see. I can't complain, man. I'm just, I guess I'm a professional open micer now <laughs> since I lost my job. I say due to COVID, but it was like the, be- you know, they had to get rid of someone and I was... The one to uh, let go, yeah. for for obvious reasons. So, uh, I was like the worst employee <laughs> ever. <laughs> what? Um, what were you doing at the time? Uh, mechanical engineering. Really? Yes. So you're a mechanical engineer. Well, yeah, that's Where? what it says yeah. on my degree. <laughs> I cheated my way through college. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You're like an inventor, like you can invent, like tech. Uh, like in the flash dude i don't know i studied mechanical engineering and i managed to graduate and i managed to find a job (laughs) but i promise you i cheated (laughs) most of the time did did you did you retain anything during that time? no i retained the guy that i cheated from his phone number i retained (laughs) (laughs) this is is coming out way too smooth to be a lie he's like no it's a very honest i kept him in my life and whenever i had a question that google wasn't able to answer for me (laughs) i would shoot him a text message this is 100 percent true his name is hector he's in miami right now wow um making way less money than i was making So you must have been making a <laughs> fucking killing. It was okay. I mean, yeah. for someone without a family. Oh, absolutely. And no yeah. kids and no parents or anything. Uh, there, there's, uh, there's no downside yet that I've heard. <laughs> no, <laughs> really? of this. no, the only downside is right now I don't have a job. Right. Oh, so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's draft up a fucking so, resume. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Well, you could use that. Well, that's gonna. That's see. That that's the fucked up part because now that you've put yourself in that position where, you're, you know an engineer, a mechanical engineer, um, a lot of places are going to say you're overqualified. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's going to make it hardest. Well, but wow. I can also say that I'm Hispanic, so I can always, you know, hit right. the dishwasher positions or oh. your good old bus boys, you know, valet parking here and there. You can't be a mechanical <laughs> engineer. <laughs> but my name car. is Francisco, so I could I really know. do oh, anything, I you mean, know. I could, there whatever. Are, there are a lot of... Uh, rich stuffy californians in austin that are going to want somebody to park their car somebody brown. absolutely so if they don't have a is. tesla you know that can park itself <laughs> you know like progressive but low-key racist <laughs> yeah but <laughs> you know the bunch <laughs> he can, but he can, he's got he can create a cold gun bro I, i'm on a still geeked out about the fucking the just the the, the title no i guess yeah jesus christ i, I can't yeah i can't see that parking it's, cars it's definitely pretty dumbfounding i mean you seem like a smart guy. I'm sure that I'm sure there was some stuff that you legitimately did the work. A pretty you did the work legitimately anyway, even if it was illegitimately. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I did work for seven years as an engineer. <laughs> you did it for seven years. Yeah, but I hated my life and every everyone in it. Like uh, I hated all of my coworkers, mm. and I hated to wake up. Well, I, I still hate to wake up every morning. Oh, yeah. But I yeah, I, I, I was miserable. Yeah, and I would like never talk to anyone. Hmm. If hmm. anyone sees me like doing stand up, they would be like that guy. 
that mm. quiet guy that never like talked to anyone. He's, full of rage. His English is not even good. He's doing stand up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's always the the card you got to play, you know. Yeah. Oh, I, I, oh, no habla, no habla. Yeah. <laughs> so, so <I> <laughs> I did not I did not see this backstory coming. Just putting yeah. that out there. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, oh, that's absolutely that's that that was a big part of you know why I wanted to bring you to here today. I wanted to. To get into that head of yours, because you are a very talented comic. I think you're yes. fucking hilarious. Oh, thank yeah. you, man. Um, Likewise, I think. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. You seem to have a good energy about you, but yeah, that's you know, that was like let's get to know Francisco a little better. Yeah, you know, he is pretty enigmatic, man. He's just like here and there, you know. I've seen you. I've seen you over the past at least year. When I first seen you at, uh, I think it was um, the parlor. You know, and ever since then, I've been uh, pretty intrigued by Parlor, the that's the, the pizza the place? The pizza place. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love that place. I used to love mm. it, too. Yeah, man. the pizza there is amazing. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah. And, uh, yeah, you're a great comic, bro. Oh, right. thank yeah. you. Every time. Mm. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to say, one of, my, uh, one of my buddies that was in basic training with me, he was also from Venezuela, and he actually also had, like, some kind of crazy Basic degree. training for what? For the Army. Oh yeah, I did. I did uh, like around eight years in the army. Nice. Yeah, I didn't always have the dad bod going on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, was, I, I yeah. wish I could say thank you for your service. I but would. I, I would, would be lying. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But no, uh, he. Uh, he actually. He had. I think some kind of same kind of degree along the same lines. I remember because he became a warrant officer and he was flying helicopters and shit. Oh. So yeah. Well, he's from Venezuelan. I he guess Venezuelan American, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was also straight from Venezuela. Had a very thick accent, thicker than yours even. Oh, okay. Yeah. Faggot. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he also no, he also knew karate. <laughs> <laughs> he also knew karate. He could twist you up pretty bad. Oh shit. <laughs> he's legit. Well, karate is not that useful in Venezuela because people have guns everywhere. True. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I've, uh, Shooting I, in the corner, making some karate moves. Yeah, and I definitely, this guy is a master with a gun. Yeah, I definitely keep, <laughs> I definitely keep my guns. I, I can oh fight, I can fight enough, you know, I, I know enough, and I can shoot you, so I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I lose the fight, that's why I, I was a little bit you. scared to come here because <laughs> you look like a kind of guy who probably has a gun <laughs> and would yeah. probably shoot me if I say something incorrectly. <laughs> no, you're completely fine no, here. No, this is, this this is a judgment free comments. zone. If you knew how much of a fucking mess Connor can be sometimes. Oh, yeah, I'm terrible, bro. And I've I've taken care of him along the way no, when not, I can. Not, 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 uh, but not I, every Javato on the street with a gun crazy, though. Know? Yeah, yeah so. and I just say that to say that, like, I don't, you know, I, 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 I'm pretty laid back is what I'm saying. Okay. You know, so, yeah, I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't make that a concern. I'm scared. It is pretty fucking sweet, though, if you want to see it. I'm scared, too, man. Right, it. yeah. right. It's pretty fucking sweet. Yeah. You still have a chance. Get out of here, bro. Get out. <laughs> Fuck. So, wait. For how long were you in the Army? Right around eight years. Okay. And you had to shoot guns? I shot some guns. You kill people? I didn't kill anybody. No. I, was a, I was a signal guy. I did satellites and radios. Oh, okay. So, you just had the gun, like, for fun? Yeah, pretty much. For the looks. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's cool. We, we do a lot of, <laughs> cool. you know, we do a lot of, like, you know combat and situational training nice. and stuff and all that but like i didn't actually go get blown up or anything. right i do have friends that did though yeah you know so i got i pretty much got stuck going back and forth between korea and fort hood texas oh shit yeah which korea was fucking sweet do you actually understand like learn any word at least one word just a little basic stuff i'm young say oh yeah it's like saying hello <laughs> um, oh wait i love okay Ju i'm back i think juicio is, is please Oh, bye. Uh, and it was like, come um, oh, It's like a goodbye. You know, it's like mm -hmm. a polite way. So you, like were, you were in the army, but you didn't need a gun, but you had one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's like one. when I, I used to, out of high school, I worked at Abercrombie and Fitch. Mm -hmm. And I, I would tell that to the girls, you know. And yeah. uh, because I guess it was kind of kind of cool at the time but now looking back it's like that, that was pretty gay <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty queer of me but uh actually i was not in the store like i was packing boxes and shit yeah, yeah. With, with the fucking immigrants yeah you still want and uh, <laughs> but i pretend that you know i was one of the cool dudes <laughs> so it's like almost like getting a gun in your case okay. <laughs> so you'd have like a you'd have like a, you'd have like a tight t-shirt on and shit for no reason no uh, shell necklace yeah <laughs> no, i'll be like oh yeah i'm i'm on my lunch break i work at abercrombie and fitch yeah <laughs> yeah i want to see my yeah. six packs yeah, I'm part but of I was the, actually packing boxes and stuff. Part of the uh, part of the team. <laughs> yeah. Abercrombie. 
Yeah. I, I, anyway. I trapped my shirt. Oh. I don't know if you know this, but uh, the M. Finch. I don't, I don't have I'm any cool guy. stories. I'm Finch. <laughs> <laughs> Finch Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. So, you touch on. Well, first of all, you're from Venezuela. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been here? And like, and did you originally land in Austin, or did you like fucking move to Austin? So I swam. <laughs> of course, of course you did. I. You have quite. God, you got. You got. I swam from <laughs> Venezuela to Miami. Yes. And then I had to fight some Cubans in the way. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Push it to the limit. <laughs> no, um, I flew here, you know. Um, my parents mm -hmm. managed to get us a ticket, American Airlines, not mm -hmm. to brag. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, I'm Venezuelan American. So my okay. mother was born here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And oh, she's okay. the only one in her family that doesn't speak any English, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. She moved, she was born here, and then she just went to Venezuela when she was like six months old. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, I, I've been in the United States. I, I moved here with my family in 2003. So mm. I don't know how long. But uh, I lived in Miami for 11 years, then Houston for about six years. I lived in China for seven months. Um, I could have I could have just skipped the China part, but I wanted to say that. I mean, that, I is, a, that is a flex. I mean, it's cool. And then it's a flex I, I came back from China, and I was in Houston for like three months, and I moved to Austin. So I've been in Austin for like a year and a half now. Okay, so something tells me you have warrants everywhere and you're a wanted man. <laughs> <laughs> it's moving state I to hope state. I don't, but it's I know. A serial killer. I always go through the freaking tolls, and I haven't paid any of them. So <laughs> yeah, I think I have like a late fee from like J June or something. Yeah. Like, it's stacking up. It's, yeah. it's getting pretty expensive. I know in Miami, all my, like, through high school and college, I never paid tolls. And I went through, like, four tolls every day. Oh, wow. And then when I, before I moved to Houston, I remember owing, like, $1,200. So oh, I've, I haven't paid it yet. Yeah, there's going to be a warrant for your arrest at Probably. some point. Probably. At yeah, some point, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. No, that's how it works eventually. The jail's not so bad, so that's fine. Uh, that's fine. I mean, it is. I actually, I, 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 I really don't know the difference between uh, jail or prison. Sorry, guys, but I was in one of them for my. I guess it's not jail for my DWI. It was jail. Jail. Like lock up. Yeah. No. That's like the pussy stuff. Like. Uh, yeah, well, why no you're no shit, one. <laughs> you only made it too. <laughs> but I was only there for like uh, thirty hours or something. Oh yeah. That's, oh yeah. Well, that's jail. Yeah. Yeah. Felon. Um, Hardcore no, felon. No, right felon, right? not felon. Not felon. No, 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 no! I'm just playing, bro. I'm getting scared. No, no doubt, man. You still so have a anyway, future. long story short, my DWI got dismissed. Yeah, because I was sober. Really? Yeah. Um, no, I was not, but I just want to try to hopefully get a job in the future. Yeah. If anyone sees this, I don't know. If well, at least she, at least she didn't like you know hurt anybody and leave the scene or anything like that. No. Anything crazy like that? No, and I only drank one small bottle of rum. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. and that's it. Wait, if you leave the scene, you can like, get in trouble for that. Like if you fail to if you fail to render aid. Fail to render aid. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. clipped him and left, man. I, <laughs> oh. yeah. I didn't blow yeah. when the police, you know, when he stopped me. I didn't blow the thing because I you always, blew him uh, when you saw the handcuffs. <laughs> Why does this? <laughs> no. I knew he was gonna turn it. I didn't. I didn't up. blow anybody until the handcuffs <laughs> came out. Yeah, I just blew people when I got in the fucking cell. <laughs> yeah. But not. I didn't. <laughs> blow, <you laughs> know. Without saying. That's no, bad. but I always heard, you know, in Miami, living in Miami, they were like, "Oh, if you ever get stopped and you're drinking, never blow the fucking thing, the breathalyzer, blah yeah. blah." So, I, and then apparently the laws here are different. Mm -hmm. If you don't blow, you're, they're gonna take your blood. Yeah. So like, it doesn't thing. really matter. And then my blood came out like two times the the fucking thing. Oh wow! And they told me, you know, you're a worse person than you th you think you are. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously, know. obviously, Francisco likes to party. So there's that. No, actually, it was <laughs> it's pretty sad because yeah. the way it happened is I was visiting my un my uncle for yeah. Father's Day. Okay. And I was like, I'll drive because it's my uncle. He's probably mm -hmm. gonna go to bed early. Yeah. And then I took a bottle of rum for him as a present and I ended up drinking the entire bottle. Oh god. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh. And my aunt uh she didn't want to let me drive 
but I was like, I'm fine, you know, stupid whore, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know how you talk to your, I to your you aunts. Call her a stupid whore. And I didn't say that because I, I don't speak English to my aunt. <laughs> <Right>. But <laughs> um, anyway, I drove and I was, uh, I got stopped and I told the police officer, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm just going to my house right here. And he's like, oh, how come your GPS says, you know, Irish pup, whatever. And I was like, okay, you know, and then whatever. Yeah, and I was wearing uh, so khaki shorts like a douche so with a polo shirt. So you were going to continue drinking? Yes, the pub. absolutely. So hell yeah! And well, they stopped me for going too slow because I was falling asleep, oh, and I was God. going to crash into the wall oh, man. on the on the expressway. So actually, Yikes. I think that guy saved my life. He probably Jesus did, though. In all in all seriousness, he probably did, man. Yeah, and he's a uh, black cop. Gotta, I know that that's, that's, it, that, that's that's the way it was. Noted. Yeah. Black cops save the day, folks. Mag yes. Magical Negro. Black cops matter, people. <laughs> I mean, we all need one in our life. There's always a magical Negro around. It's bro. true. It's wow. true. It is. It's, uh, I don't know if this is. I, this Shout is out pretty to LaDawn. To LaDawn? <laughs> no, oh, shit. Something happened. He's magical. He's, like, he's like mysterious. He pops up. He's like, oh, shit, LaDawn. I was going like, to say like leprechaun -ish. Just like. He <laughs> shows up. He's like, what's going on, my brother? to my thing. It's always magical. It's a, if if you lost, it's okay. Like I said, it's just the connection on I, I that. Hear you. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. You're still alive though, so. All right. Are you good? Are you okay? Yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah, it's, it's. I need to get more like uh, stereo headsets, like the studio ones. That's fine. I'll, I'll definitely invest in that in the future. But right now, I'm completely broke. Zero dollars in my account. That's why, got, that's why we gotta start selling Molly. Zero. <laughs> Because everything goes into the studio and into this charity event we're doing on the 18th. Mm. Um, the uh, the gift of laughter at Twice as Funny Comedy Lounge, 8 p.m. December 18th. All the uh, price of admission is a one child's toy, um, but the venue is still enforcing their. So wait, you get a room. as a toy, you get a child. Is that what you're giving? <laughs> um, yes, it's actually being sponsored. They by give Wayfair. you a kid <laughs> <Whip her off. laughs> that you get to keep for the holidays. <laughs> yes, but it's, a, it's like it's a dresser. It's like a it's like a Furby. You sit in the corner, it says funny shit to you, and you throw it away a few months later because you don't play with it. Oh, okay. I thought it was more. Get to feed it on itself. That got that dark. I got dark. I got pretty dark. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I'm just a casual observer. Everyone? Speaking speaking of dark. Speaking wow. of dark. <laughs> wow. Really Connor. Wanna... Hey, what's up, man? I, wanna, I really want to How are things going with you? Um, no, they're never okay. But um things are going pretty well. Um, I guess for, you know, for the most part. I mean, I'm not swimming in the Benjamins, but um, you know, out on my own. Still trying to pursue comedy how I can, when I can, and uh, just bringing the funny all the time, you know. So it's pretty good, man. You know, a lot more recognition out there now. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Like I said, I saw, I saw uh, day one the create the creative potential and the stuff you were putting together, and I was sure like, that, if I ever start putting something together, I, I need a I need a little bit of Connor in there. I need a little a little dash, a little dash. Yeah, there's of nothing Connor wrong with a dash of Connor, man. You don't want to overseas. It's true. For, you know, a lot of people make that mistake, but you know, I'm I'm here whenever, whenever yes. I'm needed. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you have a couple, you have a couple shows coming up, right? I do, I do. Um, we got one at the Foo Bar in Carpers Cove. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, the All Nighters Comedy Showcase, uh, put on by Cody Carpenter. Mm -hmm. uh, very cool, and uh, you know, cool guy, very funny comic. Uh, and uh, we have that going on. That would be. I think it's on the, the, the 16th of December at 8 o'clock. And then uh, at the dojo, the Red River uh, District in Austin, we got that going on uh, the 17th. And, of course, on the 18th, we got the charity event going on. And that's going to be live, too. So a lot going on. Lots of I don't have a, an assistant or anything to keep this shit, in, you know. Uh, but Trust me, I need one. Yeah. Just just look me up on Facebook yeah. and, uh, and Instagram. You'll see my, the flyers. And that's where I'll be, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, but no, like, with as much as you got going on and as much as I got going on, I'm getting to the point, like, I'm like, dude, I need to just, like, hire a maid to clean my house because <laughs> I'm way too fucking busy. It gets, like, overwhelming because I have four kids I'm chasing around, cleaning up behind. I'm managing. Uh, How much uh, would you pay? 
<laughs> well, yeah, let's I see was, your house. I don't care. I, I was, need any money. Okay, so I was hoping for like you a, can call me Maria as well, I do it. Well, too. that's what I was saying. I was hoping for like a naked nanny. So if you can do a mean tuck job, no, we might no, be in for business. Sure. I'll yeah, tuck for my sure. penis in, and right. you can call me Maria. Right, dick but, through the front, uh, balls out through the back. You exactly. Know? Yeah, exactly. That's how we get down. Yeah. That's how we get down. I'll, I'll hand wash her no. everything. I'll fucking throw some fabuloso in there. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> my, house, my house has got some yeah, like fabuloso. Yeah, I'll hand wash your, oh, your like, fucking like, boxers I'm with fucking fabuloso. Now, when you fart, the home smells like lavender. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm pretty I, sure it's going to burn a little bit, though. <laughs> yeah. That's got to burn. I mean, that's okay. A little burn's okay. A chemical burn? A chemical burn? Sure. That's, that's, I don't know if that's sure. enjoyable. Yeah, why would you want something know. burning your balls? That's weird. <laughs> yeah, no, it hurt. Don't, don't, That's gotta yeah. hurt. That happened to me today, actually. Did you really? Uh, yeah. You chemical burned yourself? Yeah, with bleach, bro. How'd you do that? Well, I was walking doing laundry. Oh, he was trying to from... bleach his anus. Were you trying? No, I went, that's where. That's <laughs> were you where trying, was, to, were you trying where... to? Were you trying to jerk off with Tide? Is that no, what happened? I, I told you I don't jerk <laughs> off anymore. They remove my penis. <laughs> I don't jerk off anymore. They remove my penis. Right. I, I I was doing laundry and I had bleach in my book bag and it mm. spilled out and right. it was like rubbing on my back. I was like, "What the fuck?" And it started burning, and I was like, "Oh, so this is what a chemical burn is like?" Which I didn't Damn. think bleach would be, but yeah. yeah so I know Fabuloso's got a fucking. Tear. No, ble- bleach is. Way more aggressive than Fabulous. I found that shit out. He's today, an engineer. Man. Trust him. <laughs> yeah, no. The, you, you know, you know what's the thing about bleach that is more powerful than Fabuloso? Mm. It has bleach. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You ever? Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> you ever take? <laughs> Don't do that. No. <laughs> Everybody no. at home that tries that will die from noxious gas. Just wait, wait, out there. wait. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. That's like rehashing it's, that. It's different. It's n- it's n- no, it's the- the- well. I think. Oh wait, maybe I, maybe I was saying it wrong. I know. It maybe it's, it- I know. I know it's a. Maybe I don't know. This shit is getting very alcohol. nerdy. You maybe it's it- alcohol. No, you mix it. <laughs> That was it. Even Don Dish. I'm over here making like terrorist like fucking weapons over here. (laughs) (laughs) I'm about to edit this entire part out. Yeah, yes, please. Like it's like the whole part. Every time I say like a chemical, I'm gonna have to like mute it. <laughs> no, no, I'm real, but you can, they're I gonna mean, be like trying to read my lips behind them. I'm like, what's that motherfucker they, say? They, they actually tell everybody. you. They actually tell you that on Google. Yeah, and um, just so you can avoid it, like they'll tell you not to mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I remembered it. Chem- I remember uh, like, if it's on Google, that's well, no, because no, well, it's true. Well, and saying, like, I've come across so much different types of knowledge at different times. Like you know, like like you can make what was it like. They edit that part out. It's, okay. it's, it's literally you, it's you it's it. you mix it and it. This no. is this is self sabotage. <laughs> this is self sabotage. No, no, it's gonna be funny. I don't know what's happening, behind. but I'm not part of this. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say anything about that. that. These people are making. <laughs> no. Yeah. Specify. Yeah. No, it, I'm gonna actually mute all those parts out whenever I say a chemical. And it's gonna be hilarious on the back <laughs> end. <laughs> This has got to be looking like yeah, because I can't be giving people like recipes for like dangerous substances on my fucking podcast. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's that. that, 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 that Also, on that note, do not drink bleach. Yeah, Uh, unless you got a drug test coming. Unless you have COVID. (laughs) Yeah, it doesn't work. If you get COVID, just drink a lot of milk. Yeah, get as mucusy as you can and fucking die. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that's probably that was morbid. Why would I even do that? Just have a cheeseburger. With the cheese, the dairy, the mayo. Right. I don't know, dude. We're getting really dumb right now. I've been getting dumb this whole time. I'm sorry. I only had two shots, too. Mm, shame. All right, anyway. <laughs> Francisco, yeah, I was going to ask you. Um, so my buddy uh, that is in the Army, that is in, in that is from Venezuela, I remember there was stuff going on in the news, and I posted about it, and he uh, legitimately said that he wishes that the U.S. would actually intervene with Venezuela uh, because of his family and stuff back home uh, to actually do something about it. What, without, you know, and if you don't want to share your opinion on that, it's okay, but I just figured I would ask. What are your, what are your feelings on that? 
Um, absolutely, I agree with him, but I don't see why the United States would intervene, you know, with Venezuela. Mm. Other than Venezuela is, it has one of the sec, like I think the second largest oil reserve in the world. That's it. But America is doing well with oil right now, and oil is down, you know, in the market. Mm. So I don't really <sighs> see uh, the need for the United States to intervene. It would be amazing, but if they did, they would also be touching other buttons with like China and Russia mm -hmm. and like Iran and then all of a bunch of other people that I don't know if the United States mm -hmm. is, you know, willing to like... You're 100% right though about the oil thing because a lot of why we went to Iraq and shit, obviously. George Bush is an oil tycoon. That's why we went. Let's be honest. Yeah. He went to finish his dad's war. So, and am I bad? I didn't really mean to go down the political hole. I was going to be like, you know, just asking you about, you know, pretty much what your experience was, because I know you've touched on it some uh, in stand-up. Um, but, yeah, I definitely, you know, know that uh, South America is pretty much, there's a lot of places where the Russians have been coming into. I was reading something. I, I can't remember what country specifically, uh, but it was completely random, but, like, Russia was just there. Like, they're set up, and they're, like, they're setting up camp. Same thing with, like, China and Africa and stuff. It's, it's and, it, and it, at the same time, though, it's the same thing we've seen that the Europeans did and that the Americans have done as far as going to other countries and, like, setting up, you know, posts or whatever else. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, the, it's, it's all the same game. It's one giant game of, like, global risk, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure the Russians are in Venezuela. Or oh, 100%. I'm 100% I'm sure. Uh, yeah. But the thing is, though, like, I wouldn't even have an opinion on it or give a fuck yeah. if those people were being aided. Like, if Russia was there for, like, a, like a humanitarian reason, aside from, you know, the obvious de defensive posture or whatever, yeah. um, like, like, hey, they're, you know, the quality of life is going up. Then, yeah. what's, then what would be the complaint? Yeah. You I'm know? really uh, not po political at all. Yeah. So, um, my, my bad for doing that. I didn't mean to, but, I didn't, I didn't yeah, mean to do that. I, I just want Venezuela to be able to go back to how it was um, before I moved mm -hmm. uh, here. That was, like, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago. Yeah where baseball was happening and you could go out to eat to a restaurant and i mean it was still shitty because it's a third world country and it, it has always been but it was a place that you could actually live and you know um it was a prosperous third world country so like the best of the worst mm. yeah but now it's the worst of the you know it's one of the most miserable countries in the world and that's just how it is right now People from Venezuela are fleeing everywhere to Colombia, everywhere in South America, Europe, you know, Spain. Um, here, obviously, United States, there's a lot of more. Or when I was in China, I saw a lot of Venezuelans there, too. Um, so we're everywhere trying to, you know, yeah. sustain and, ourselves. And, and again, I, I really didn't mean to, like, push that on you or put you on the spot. It's okay. So I apologize. Like yeah, I, said, I know. I mean, it was, I, like I, it was in the back of my I head. I know you're a Castro supporter, so that's fine. <laughs> no, it was, it was in the back of my head and it came out of my mouth, so I apologize. <laughs> um, but, like, uh, you said you came here, um, what year, 2007 or something like 2003. that? 2003. 2003. So, uh, that's 2002, right. I think, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, you've been here a good 17 plus years. Like, going, probably yeah. going on 18. Yeah. 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 So, um... So, what, uh, how old are you now? 31. You're 31. I'm 33. Okay. Okay. So, um, so you left about what, like, uh, because my brain's not doing Ever since right I got like fired 16. from my engineering job, um, I decided to delete Hector's phone number. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not doing any math. He, he wasn't, he wasn't reliable. <laughs> no, it was, it was a good 15. But, it was yeah. 15. So, you were 15. No, so. I think I was like, Look, I was a, a senior in middle school. Okay. I remember when I started high school, I was probably 15. So when I moved here, I think I was 13, and then I turned 14 here. So, yeah, I think I was 13 when I moved here wow. in 2002. Mm -hmm. And I remember because my mother had a Toyota Corolla, 2003 Toyota Corolla, not to mm -hmm. brag. And it was a year older than the year we moved here. So. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know for how long I've been here, but and the pe people ask me, you know, why you've been here for a while. How come your English sounds like you're eating a bag of dicks? 
That's you know, true. That's and it's true. because when I moved here, I moved to Miami. Yeah. That's yeah. it. You know, that's so you, I moved to Miami and yeah. So you're in North Cuba. So yeah, my yeah. English teacher was Pitbull. Yeah, and that's how it is. Pulo. Yeah, moving to Miami to learn English is like I don't know, going to McDonald's, thinking you're gonna be on a diet. Yeah, you know, you it might work out, but you're gonna you, it's gonna take more work, and at the end, you're probably gonna be disappointed with the results. So. Uh, so with all the all the um, moving you did, I think you said you lived in China, Europe, Houston, Miami, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what 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 was the reason behind the moves at the time? So when I went to China, in China, I I say I lived there, but I was there for seven months, for, right? For work, it counts. Yeah, for work. And then when I went to Europe and stuff, that was also for work, but I never really lived there. I was there for like most for the most time I was in Europe was for two weeks or three weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was for work. Yeah, I just worked for a okay. global company. So you were so you were working. So just the engineering stuff. Yeah. So uh, like I'm still perplexed by this. Okay. So you say that you cheated, all of it, mm-hmm. and most of it. You have to have some level of competency. Still yeah. Here's from the thing. Reading the material and having to take the test and all that. There has to be absolutely, something. absolutely. Here's the thing. Um, you have to be. Like you have to know enough in order in order to cheat uh, engineering degree, you know. Because even if you get the formulas, you you need to know how to use those formulas. Right. It's like getting I don't know like the notes to play an instrument mm-hmm. for a great masterpiece. Um, you were supposed to write it in the test, but someone told you. But you still got to play it, you know? You yeah. still n- need to know how to play. So pretty much when yeah. I say cheating, yes, you know, someone would throw me, you know, the formulas or, or yeah. But you still have to, like, get the, you know yeah. how to use a freaking for- formula. <coughs> yeah. So, like that, I, so I think the cheating is more unjust. I think that you know some shit. Ah, I, I, ch- think you know I cheated. I cheated. <laughs> I still <laughs> think, you, I still I think you know something. Let, okay, look, you know uh, if, if, if no one gave me the formulas for that exam... I would have failed that test. Okay. Does that make any sense? It does. Yeah. But uh, did I n- know enough so I could use the formulas? Yes. But if but I didn't know which formulas to use. I'm oh, wow. so fucking lost, but he's doing wow. it on purpose. <laughs> What's <laughs> happening, Brad? <laughs> it doesn't so make any sense. Would so he would know all of <laughs> all of the math, right? All the formulas. Dude, but he it's like know situationally. Look, uh, I'm gonna to make it, it simple. It's like someone telling you, "Make me uh, a margarita drink." Margarita. A margarita drink, right? Right. And you're like, I don't know how, well, like, what the ingredients are, yeah. but you know how to make drinks, okay? Then someone tells you, gives you a paper, and he's like, okay, so I need a uh, fucking tequila, triple sec, whatever salt, you know, the things that you need. So then you're good. You know how to make it, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much what it was. Someone told me the, the the ingredients, and then I knew how to mix them together. But that's so what school pass. does. <laughs> Is yeah. that what school does? Yeah. Actually, I think it helped me in my career because um, a lot of the engineers that I worked with were obviously very nerdy. Yeah. But because I wasn't, because I cheated my way through school, I would always try to figure a way out to get someone else do it for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then I would come out with the answer to the customer, and the customer thought I was a genius. <laughs> but in reality, someone else did it for He's got me. Got little pocket nerds. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. that's, uh, that's basically how the army works. You know, somebody else fixes it, and then you take the credit. Like, right. Like Absolutely. yeah, like yeah, yeah. My team that I trained so well, they got all yeah. this done. Like it's but done. it doesn't like, matter. I feel like that's everywhere you go. It's like that because even is. you know you. As yeah. an engineer, you give it to the to the salesperson, and then he's taking the credit, right? Right. And then the customer thinks he's a, he's the the mastermind be, or whatever. You know, it's just it's everywhere. It's like that. I feel that's why I yes. love stand up because it's you there, and only one thing is gonna determine if you're gonna be successful or not <laughs> is yeah. if people are laughing. Exactly. And that's it. It's you. No, you cannot cheat. You know, I mean, you can cheat by stealing people's jokes, but you're not going to be very successful doing that. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if you're stealing jokes, you're going to run out of juice because you have no original material. Absolutely. That was, that was well so put. that's, well and, and I think uh, ultimately, whenever you cheat, you can never truly be like happy 
That's why I was so like unhappy at my job and why I hated it because I I didn't have any passion for it. Yeah. I didn't like it. I was like this fucking this is fucking stupid. Um, you know, it's like the kind of thing that you can like remove yourself and things are still gonna be running just fine. Mm -hmm. But when you pursue something like artistic, it's like even if even if that night nobody laughed, you kind of mm -hmm. like enjoyed it for yourself. Or it's like I don't know, I don't know. It's just something I enjoy doing. That's good. Versus something I studied because everyone in Venezuela was becoming an en engineer because of oil. And I wanted to be an architect. And my dad told me that was for faggots. And uh, I was like, okay, I'll be an engineer. And then that's what I did. You know? And I feel like you still want to be an architect now, don't you? I don't, I don't like dick that much. You don't like it that much? <laughs> no? I don't like dick. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Because what is dead. That's funny. <laughs> It's dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark, but it's true. But my dad is like, you know, it, th this is something that is really, I guess, I don't know what the word is, maybe interesting or, um, yeah, let's go with interesting about Venezuela. Yeah. Is that people in Venezuela, it's like going back to like the 70s here mm. where culturally nothing has like grown, you know, yeah. like women, you know, they belong in the kitchen and that's it. And you, you take care of the kids And I go out and I bring money and, and you know, and facts and queers. That's how it is right now, yeah. still, mm -hmm. which um, I do not agree, but I find it kind of hilarious. <laughs> it's like going back in time yeah. and it's like this, like, and, and I mean, I'm talking for, I guess, the older people of Venezuela because the younger people do have access, the ones that can have access to internet and Blah, 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 blah. But I don't know. I think it's kind of funny that a lot of, like, like my dad and uncles yeah. and stuff, they're kind of, like, living that. The well, that's, that's what it's like when I <coughs> when Okay, so I'm originally from Maine. That's where mm -hmm. I was born at. Whenever yeah. I go back up there to see family and stuff, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Because it's so, it's so removed from the rest of the United States. I can see it's that. All, it's all backwoods, mountains, mm -hmm. uh Everybody just hunts and fishes. Like yeah. That's pretty much the thing. It's all outdoor yeah. stuff. I left there when I was like nine to Alabama. I lived there until I was 17. Spent a couple years in Kentucky and then bounced around the three and ended up in the Army, Texas, Korea, whatever. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely like sought out mm -hmm. to become cultured. It wasn't something that was just given to me. What was given to me was like, you know, yeah, go out there and work in, the, work in the paper mill, Dad, downtown, yeah. you know, maybe, you know, buck season's coming up, head out in the woods, Dad, you know, get fucking yeah. boy your old fucking ten point out there, you know. Yeah. Fucking go smelt and get some fishes, go fucking, fucking walk on the ice, pop some holes, <laughs> go fucking ice fishing. <laughs> That's a nice accent. I like it. <laughs> like, It's a nice sound. Yeah. But I, I think it's, you know, it's weird because... Everything has to do like with the way you're raised and the people you're surrounded. <clears throat> like if you, like at the end of the day, I don't, I don't think it's anyone's fault for like being racist. <laughs> like you were, I'm not saying you, mm. but racists, they were born in like a racist environment. Mm -hmm. And that's like the people they, their surroundings and the people they hung out with. And that, that was like normal for them. And mm -hmm. I don't know. To me, also, it kind of happened like mo by moving here. Like, okay, so the world is bigger than just you know my small city in Venezuela and just like the few people that I know and things like that. Mm -hmm. And but it still blow my mind whenever I talk to my dad and you know I I call my ca my cousin gay because he is, and then my dad is like, don't call him gay. He's a fucking faggot. Oh wow. Yeah, and he said he still says that. Wow. So do I get angry or do I laugh? I don't yeah. know. I don't know what to do. No, I, I, I definitely, definitely feel that. I definitely understand for sure. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of the <coughs> understanding and whatnot, you know, and adjusting to what's around. A lot of that, like, I, was, I grew up pretty poor. Like, when I was real young, my dad was, like, selling drugs and stuff. So we'd have, like, a pretty fucking sweet Christmas. But then, like... After he beat the shit out of my mom a bunch of times and they got divorced and we moved to Alabama and stuff, we were like pretty poor. Like mm -hmm. I lived in trailers, I lived in the projects, I've lived in houses that had holes all in the fucking walls and rats and roaches and shit everywhere, spiders, fucking some nasty shit. But during that time, uh, when, when I was poor, pretty much 
all of the people I started befriending were like black and brown and stuff. So like that was my entire circle. And it's still that way now for the most part. I've got like a couple white friends, you know, mm -hmm. here and there. And it's it's mostly to do with uh, having that common ground uh, and some level of struggle. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I don't have the same level of struggle or the same issues, but there are some similarities. And I, th I think just uh, having, having that common ground has uh, created that link where we communicate and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's, that's so. That's so Wendy, that. you moved from Alabama to Killeen? Uh From Alabama to Kentucky, then from Kentucky to Maine, and I got in the army oh, around okay. the same time, uh, and then I came out here. I've been in Texas since uh, 2010, October. Um, was here for three years. Went back to Korea for a couple years, <coughs> then came back. So I've got a good bit of time here under my belt. Were you? I don't know. Were you like nervous when you had to go to Korea, or I was extremely nervous because I didn't know what was going to happen. Like there would just been like at some. You some went to South Korea. Yes, I yeah. assume. Yeah, you don't go to North. <laughs> you don't go to North. Um, yeah, I heard this uh, this joke when I was in China doing mm -hmm. an open mic. Um, here's how you know someone from North. Fuck, I'm not gonna say because I'm gonna I'm not gonna say it correctly. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll try to remember it and then I'll say it later. All right, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. I'd love to hear it. But, uh, oh, okay. I'm going to say it. I'm okay. going to wing it. Yeah. Okay. So here's how you know someone uh, from South Korea versus someone from North Korea. Uh, someone from South Korea, um, they usually have like a small mustache growing up. Um, someone from North Korea, um, yeah, they're. They're in North Korea, so you're not able to see them at all. Wow. <laughs> They're not able to exit the country. <laughs> um, so, spoiler alert, nobody in South Korea has facial hair. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't, that's why I said I, I didn't want to say that joke. Yeah. Because um, I didn't write it. Yeah. It was this guy from China, and I, right. it was a really poor representation right. of the well, joke you know but it was something along those lines but the punchline is correct listen <laughs> it, listen he's probably never gonna get the opportunity to get to tell the joke because if he was in beijing he probably got black bags already he's probably gone <laughs> so you got it it's your joke now no 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 actually <laughs> it's funny because um when i did the mics in china they would prohibit saying anything from north korea and i don't know why he he um he said it but it was funny I remember crushing, and also I know who the guy is, and he just opened for Jim Gaffigan not too long ago. Well, um, well, fuck yeah. me, uh, he wasn't in Beijing then, was he? <coughs> I guess not. No, but uh, again, I apologize for saying his joke very wrongly because I'm sure their joke is nothing like that, but the punchline is pretty like that. I don't know. Well, whatever. it's funny. I have a I have a similar joke. I pretty much I have this whole set or the whole bit where I trash every religion, like, separately. And at one point I go, I would I would get on the Muslims, but I don't want anybody to set it off up in here, so. And I, I mean, I know there's no Muslim women in here. I can see you guys' faces, so, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, same same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Can't see the face, can't see the face. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's not racist. I trash the Christians, too. Just relax, relax. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> relax. <laughs> um, Connor. Connor, Connor, Connor. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so you've been trying to, um, and have been, uh, branching out, doing more skits. That's fine. It's just, it's just, it's no, it's, it just set it off to the side. It's fine. You can completely, you can completely move it. It's just a boom mic. But you've been reaching out, uh, expanding uh, to do some more skits with more people. We're going to move all away from the political stuff we were talking about there for a little bit. Um, Word up. Yeah. I think we've only done like one episode where we really went down the rabbit hole. I think it was with Hudak. I think, yeah, I think it was with Hudak and Fergola that happened. But anyway, <laughs> so you've been expanding out, doing more skits with more people. Um, who are who are some people that you would still like to link up with, possibly, uh, if you could, uh, to make some online content? Everyone. No discrimination. I like to link up with you funny. Even if you're not funny, I just like, man, I want to unite the world in comedy. That's all. You know, um, I could name drop. There we go. You know what I mean? But that's that's crass and tacky. It's and not. I've never, I'm, I've never been. It's that not guy. if it's a direct qu if it's a direct question. It's not really. No, well, so, cause, like, I mean, I, I, just not to exclude or alienate anybody. Uh, just like whoever's willing to work with me, 
at some level, I'm willing to work with you. Uh, okay. And um, a lot of the time, most people that I do work with in skits reach out to me just because they like my content and, um, you know, or, or, or are looking to expand their brand mm. through content. And, you know, I'm just all for anybody that's willing to, you know, for lack of better words, fuck with me, I fuck with you too, you know, mm. uh, because I can make anything work. You know, I can make anything funny. So, you know, any ideas, uh, you know, or, or just, you know, just run and gun, which is what I excel at, just really running and gunning. Um, and I'm getting better every day. So, you know, just just basically anybody, man. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, I'm, gonna, I'm supposed to be working on some content with Josh Castro tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still want to work with Stephen Farmer, um, uh, Ty, Gwen, you know. Of course, uh, Francisco, you know, just oh, yeah. a lot of people that I've seen on my journey doing these open mics, uh, which really broadened my horizons and expanded my uh, focal point mm -hmm. of what funny was because, you know, it was isolated to Colleen for so long. So, you know, just, just the people I've seen along the way, of course, you know, I want to do something, you know, even if everybody's not main characters, uh, just for certain set pieces, uh, a crowd is required. So, you know, everybody can get some love and, you know, takes off. That's exposure for everybody. So I don't yeah. want to leave anybody out, you know, because we're all out here grinding for real. Absolutely. Francisco's got a good look. I think, I think he could be an actor. Easy. Easy. Maybe. I don't know. I, I well, It's all about angles anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have I'm you not, thought about uh, it? Have you thought about acting? Uh, not really. Um, I, I just enjoy doing stand-up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is... I don't know. It's I, I guess it's even trickier now that I know, you know, I have a mechanical engineering degree or whatever, and I could have like a a well paying job. Mm -hmm. But like now I'm doing like open mics <laughs> like full time mm -hmm. and I'm seriously thinking about never returning to engineering. Yeah, never. Just to like force myself to push through. But I know it sounds very naive. Because I'm saying that with two years in, mm -hmm. and probably comedians who might <coughs> even be professional and very successful, listening to me, your podcast, probably Joe Rogan is listening to us. <laughs> um, yeah, well, probably. maybe not Definitely. Joe Rogan, yeah. but like maybe <laughs> Kevin Hart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're yeah. they're probably laughing. I mean, like kid, just go back and be an engineer. Yeah, <laughs> this is tough or whatever. Well, I but I will tell you though. Um, I recently had. Um, my Sia Chabert and uh, Diego Morales um, on on the show, and uh, I found out then that Diego actually walked away from whatever stuff he was doing actually to do stand up full time. Mm. That was actually the decision he made as well. Um, pretty much, I mean, I okay. So my whole situation is, I did my time in the military and I secured my benefits, so I get a check every month for that. Oh, cool. So that's You're sad. What, yeah. So that's why I'm able to. Create oh. full time, you know. what I'm saying I went nice. out and fucking. I was wondering where all these mics came from. <laughs> yeah, from our taxes. Uh, yeah, I, I get. I pay taxes, by the way. I'm Venezuelan American. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Shout out to fucking taxes. But anyway. So this, we are we own these mics a little bit. I I, know, mean, I was telling I was telling Connor on the way here. I have zero dollars in my bank account right now. Uh, yeah. So, welcome to the club. No, no, I'm saying like I'm I'm not I'm definitely not balling all this stuff I bought over time and shit and mm -hmm. invested and you know, I I tell I tell people all the time, you know, recently I'm like, "Hey, you know, people that don't really respect or know what I'm doing, it's well, it's because they don't know what I'm doing." Like because <coughs> I, you know, they don't get those those late fucking notices for bills and shit, you know, mm -hmm. they don't they don't have to make that long stretch to payday sometimes and shit or fucking whatever. I take L's all the time, but I take those L's and I keep going, you know? Yeah. That, that's the trick. People need to, if you're going to be successful, you got to be resilient. You got to be able to fucking just take a fucking fist in the mouth and a fucking dick in the ass and still be able to keep fucking moving. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, it is tough because there's so many people, even though there's a lot of like, there's few comedians compared to other professions. But there's a lot of fucking comedians. There's a lot too. of us, bro. <laughs> you just gotta, you gotta <laughs> a lot of house. comedians are struggling. A lot of comedians who are right. struggling and have been doing it for way longer. Mm -hmm. So they're like more resentful. A lot of comedians yeah. who have been doing it for less time and now they're like successful or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. It's it's tough. So yeah. um, I guess at the end of the day, you do have to, I guess, trust your God and you have to be your number one fan, as gay as that yeah. sounds. Um 
But yeah, because if you don't, I mean, you just gotta so, be funny, bro. Because yeah, that's, you you have to. It. Well, it's more. It's you more have to be that. funny, but uh, but also there's so many funny people in the world. Yeah, there's so more, many. It's true. more than being funny. It's being willing to to burn the midnight oil and do those long nights of whatever you gotta do. It's willing to make sacrifices of you know maybe I maybe I shouldn't party right now because maybe I need gas money so I can get to the mic you know shit like that yeah you got you got to make decisions man you got to make choices and you got to be willing to do the fucking work you got to fucking like I said that that's the biggest thing you could be the most talented funny fucking person in the room on the planet whatever but if you can't focus on what you're trying to fucking do you're gonna fucking wash out like every fucking super talented rapper or whatever else that i've come across in life i'll be yeah. st- i'll be stumbling through this shit bro i don't i don't even know how i'm here right now you know what i'm saying i i don't know man i just, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> i still have yet to fully i don't know man i guess if i do do that maybe i'll become successful at comedy, I mean, I, I don't do. I that. mean, you're doing fine because you're constantly working. You're fucking. You're on multiple shows. You just said right. You're doing constant yeah, mics. You're fucking making constant digital content. So you're always working. That's work. It's it's more like stuff because I don't I don't see it as work. Because just, because you're I having fun. It. I love it. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. man. I think it's tricky. You just fucking have to enjoy it. I think one day at a time. Absolutely. That's how you have to fucking do it. And if you bomb and you have a bad night, you know, fucking go to sleep, you know, masturbate, do whatever you have to do. Yeah. You don't come. Whatever makes you happy. You know, to, <laughs> tomorrow will be, a, it'll be a new day and whatever. You fucking, yeah. you focus in, in that day. And try not to focus. 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 Um, no, I'm just name dropping. I have yeah. to do, a, anyway, an ad for the four focus. I actually have um, one in the yard. Yep. Oh, you have yep. one? Yep. You have one of those. I'm going to get rid of it, though. Cool. Soon. Anyway, uh, I forgot what I was saying. Um, yeah, just one day at a time, man. One day, one day at, at a time. time. I couldn't agree more. One day at a time. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, do not you know, dwell too much or focus into what like other comedians are doing or like, oh, these people are getting booked or whatever. It doesn't matter. Like that, That's the way I see it. You know, I see a lot of people become resentful. And again... I might be very be sounding very naive right now saying that because I've only been doing it for two years and life is beautiful and rainbows and butterflies, even though I do bomb and I have those nights that I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm wasting my fucking time, <laughs> blah, blah. Um, yeah. <coughs> but yeah, that's the only thing I, I tell myself at least is just fucking do it one day at a time and enjoy it. That, and that's but. that's really it, man, because, you know, and I'm in agreement. You know, I have I have nights I, I try out new material, and I just fucking eat a bowl of dicks. I just fucking crash and burn. Yeah. I have other nights where I try new material, and I just fucking light the room up, yeah. you know? Dude, the worst is when you have material that you know works, <laughs> and it doesn't. I, well, no, I've... I, I, <laughs> like, if, if you, you're in a show, and all the comics are, like, killing... And then you go up and you eat a bag of dicks. Mm. You're like, holy shit, okay, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what I can do. Or, or or if somebody walks up to you like, hey, man, fuck them, man. They don't know what funny is, bro. Like, they, they don't just don't get it. Or you know, That hurts a lot. Yeah, that bro, this, lot. That, that's why this is so fucking tricky. You got to, the, the crowds vary, you know, it's different if you're going to do stand-up. Even, you know, in Texas, you go from Austin to Killeen or to Houston, you're going to get a different crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, so it it's tricky and it varies. So I don't know, man. It, this is why stand up is so fucking difficult, mm-hmm. and people think it, it's easy. It's it's way hard. Um, it's so hard. how? Oh, you said you've been doing stand up about two, about two years. Yeah, yeah. When I, April April twelfth will be two years for me when it comes back around. Um, what uh what was the the moment the situation that inspired you to do comedy or was it something you always wanted to do and you just kind of stumbled into it or I. This is going to be a little controver- controversial because a lot of people don't like Dane Cook. But he's a guy that uh, I remember watching and being like, oh, like he's, he looks cool. I want to kind of, I want to, I, I want to do that. I want to do stand up. And then I was probably like 14 or 15. 15. I was in high school already. And I remember trying to say something funny in the shower. And I was like, wait, maybe I need to learn English first. <laughs> because <laughs> the words were not rolling yeah. out of my mouth hmm. um, 
but I also remember, like, for some reason, it had always been with me. I remember when I was a kid listening to a stand-up comedian from Venezuela, El Conde del Guacharo, um, and just, like, laughing like crazy and playing that shit, like, back-to-back, you know, and always, like, watching stand-up and comedy with my family, and my parents are super always, like, funny and whatever. Um, anyway, I started in China because I was depressed and I was looking for things to do, and then I saw uh, something for an open mic, and I'm like, holy shit. Um, and then I went up, and then I was like, okay. I didn't, from that moment, I didn't care about my ex anymore. And I really, um, I got some laughs the first night I went up, and I was like, that was an amazing feeling. Um, and that I, I just, you know, kept doing it. That's funny uh, because I have a similar thing. I was. It's a longer story, but I didn't want to yeah. like make you really bored. But yeah. No, it's fun. I'm here. We're good. But that's the last yeah. line. That's uh, the punchline of that story. Okay, I laughed. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but um, no, I was going through the initial throes of my divorce with my uh, my ex, my kid's mom, um, and I uh, I had been just starting to write some jokes on my phone because I felt like I wanted to do comedy, and uh, I saw just the open mic popped up on Facebook. Uh, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go do it. And I did it. And I told my jokes and I got some laughs or whatever. You did it where? Uh, Twice as Funny Comedy Lounge, uh, where we're doing the Oh, okay. So here. Event. Yep. Cool. Um, and I remember, uh, yeah, the feeling, like, I just knew that's, like, this is what I want to do. Like, it just hit me. I was, like, driving home. Like, I, yeah. I, I always tell people, dude, I don't give a fuck. I yeah. was crying on the way home because I was just, like, tears of joy. I was, like, so fucking happy. Oh, dude. shit, yeah. This, like, this fucking weight. That's almost like I felt. Like, I, I didn't I didn't cry because I'm not gay. Right, right, but, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, all, all I was thinking about was dicks the whole time. <laughs> just dicks. No, but I felt like that. Like, yeah. And before I went up, I was always listening to, um, to stand-up. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. Um, I had, like... Uh, I know a lot of people think, oh, he's, you know, because I'm, like, saying very, like, generic guys. Like, I was listening to a lot of Kevin Hart Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Dane Cook and Daniel Tosh. Um, But when, actually, the first time I listened to stand-up in English, I would watch. (laughs) This is kind of embarrassing because of the people I'm named. Well, they're doing way better than all of us. Yeah. But uh, I used to watch Larry the Cable Guy. And Ron White, which Ron White is very respectful. I still I, like him. I love Ron White. Uh, but Dane Cook, Kevin Hart, and um, I forgot who, who was the other person I named. I, I still uh, respect them as, as comics. I'm not a, 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 as a huge fan as I was of them, but I do like uh, Ron White still. Um, but I didn't understand anything that they were saying. And I would watch their specials and their Comedy Central stuff all the time. And I didn't laugh because I didn't understand, but I would watch it. And then whenever my mother was walking by, I would fake laugh. And then she would get angry. She would be like, why are you laughing? You don't even understand what they're saying. And I was like, shut up, stupid whore. You know, <laughs> go clean the house. Everybody in the family has what you call stupid whore. I clearly do not talk like that to my mother. Right. <laughs> she owns a flip-flop. <laughs> the chancla, the Latino yeah. flip-flop. Yeah, right yeah. to the back of the head. Yes. Yeah. That's dope, though. Yeah. That's dope. I used to listen to, uh, when I was like around 15, I'd listen to a lot of uh, Eddie Murphy and... Uh, Ooh, I love Eddie Murphy. And Richard Pryor. I listened to tons and tons of Richard Pryor. Yeah. Dude, one of my favorite bits ever is the ice cream bid yep. that Eddie Murphy does. And because even in Venezuela, but believe it or not, people, we had ice cream <laughs> there. And we had the fucking guy with the ice cream thing, and you could hear the song or whatever. In Venezuela, we don't have a song. We have the, the bell. Ling, 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 ling. And then all the kids, you know, would go running. Ice cream. I don't know. I feel like crying right now. It's okay. That's <laughs> what this show is, man. Like, we, we'll, we'll talk about something serious, and we try to lighten it up. We'll go around. It is what it is. Cool. Just as long as it's real. As long as it's real. And also dumb, because I talk about, you know, a bunch of dicks today. But, so yeah, my about. favorite comedians right now, I really like uh, Norm MacDonald. <coughs> probably one of my favorites. He's brilliant. Uh, Louis C.K., I know a lot of people hate him, but I still really enjoy his stand-up. Yeah. Um, Dave Chappelle has, has been killing it go, um, go. for forever. But, yeah, I, I also enjoy Sebastian Maniscalco. There's something about him that I relate to him deeply. Mm-hmm. 
I think his culture, like he's from an Italian background, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of similar to Latinos in a way. He has this bit where his mother is like a lasagna factory and she's just like, lasagna is just coming from the basement. That's fucking hilarious. And all, he's very like, uh, um, what's the word? When you do a lot of movements, people help me. Animated. Animated, yep. I guess that's a word. So it's kind of like a, a, a different version of Dane Cook that I enjoy a little bit yeah. more. Uh, and his jokes seem to be like real shit that kind of happened to him. And obviously he has jokes in there. But uh, I don't know. I really enjoy him. And for some reason, I also like uh, Jim Gaffigan a lot, a lot. He's really funny as well. Um, everybody you name, by the way. I mean, <coughs> I, I get it. It's like mainstream comedy. You know, yeah. what people think or whatever. Uh, but those were all funny people at the time. I listened to all of them. I thought they were yeah. all were funny. And some sometimes, you know, I go back to like see Louis C.K. or Jim Gaffigan before they were anyone. Mm-hmm. And they kind of sucked. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, there's a little bit of hope, I guess. Oh, yeah, dude. I remember the f like watching Jim Gaffigan. It was when I was in Alabama. We were living in the first place we lived at. Because I used to watch a lot of just the, like, the stand-up things, like the Comedy Central things. It'd be like, you know, it'd have like multiple comedians on there. I remember seeing Jim Gaffigan way back then and all those cats, man. Yeah. And so it's, it's crazy, like, knowing that I was watching him then. As I mean, he might have just been doing like a featured slot or whatever, and like now he's got like, you know, he had like a massive deal with Amazon and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. same thing with the guys yeah. getting Netflix deals. It's yeah, his last Amazon was kind of weird, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I've, I don't think I got fully invested in that one when yeah. I was watching. I was like, meh, meh. Yeah. What about you? Who's one of your favorite comedians? One. Well, there's, a, there's a lot. Bill Burr, Anthony Jeselnik. Anthony um, yes on there. Like Cedric it. the Entertainer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you know who's fucking Griffin. funny? Oh, uh, La Lavelle Crawford. Mm -hmm. Lavelle Crawford's funny. Dude, that guy's hilarious. Is is he too mainstream? I'm I'm just no, it's not. He's am not. I throwing just Disney characters out no, here? These are am all I am I not cool yeah. enough these for all, you guys? No, these are all great comics. I'm not a comedy snob in any way. So, I just I I really just start actually paying attention when I started comedy because oh, okay. it was an accident, you know. So. Uh, I mean, I've seen, I used to watch like Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, just growing up and shit, yeah. but I never really stuck to it. Like everybody watched Comic View, but I never mm. was invested in it. Like mm. I, I am now, I study it now. So Yeah. Mm. Oh, Mo Amer. Is that how you pronounce his name? Mo Amer. Do you know him? Mm. He has a Netflix special. He's like friends <laughs> with Chappelle and stuff. He is fucking hilarious. And I just saw Michelle Wolf in Austin. Mm. She was great. Yeah. Yeah. She's probably one of my favorite female stand-ups right now. And uh, Sam Ariel, he's funny. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All good but, names. Uh, yeah. I'm just out here. I'm a fan. You're a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are, no, and the, a lot of these, uh, there's some real, like, funny-ass female comics coming up that I've been watching. Like, yeah. uh, I think her name is, one of them, I think her name is Tammy Conkren. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Probably have to look that up. But, um, yeah, no, just... A lot of a lot of women are, are are going towards more dark comedy than I've seen uh, mm -hmm. from past like clips and shit, which I think is pretty inspiring as well. You know, comedy yeah. is just really coming out to the forefront. Yeah, where I didn't even know it was underground like it is. Yeah, I remember really liking uh, Lisa Lampanelli on those roasts. Oh God, I never just liked her. So you vulgar. never you never liked her? She's so cringy to me. Yeah, I I loved her, and <laughs> I also liked the uh, fuck. What's his name? Um, all she ever says Shit. is, I love big black cocks. That's yeah. all she says. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, I haven't listened to her in a while, but maybe if I go back to whatever made me laugh mm -hmm. before I ever did stand up <coughs> like 15 years ago, yeah, um, I I probably won't find it funny anymore because I yeah. went back to like see some of those uh, like Dane Cook and like Kevin Hart's. And I'm like, uh, I don't know if I like that anymore. Yeah. Um, Stuff doesn't But like Norm MacDonald, I love yeah. Norm MacDonald. You know? Yeah, he's so funny. Yeah. Oh, dude, there's this clip on YouTube you really Wait, need to watch. Me. It's, uh, she's yeah, she's good. Um, no, it's this thing with, uh, with Norm MacDonald, though. It's like he had sponsors for his, uh, his podcast or his show or whatever. And he, he it's just like these very, very shitty items, like fucking different little like uh, hot plates and stuff like that. And he's just like shitting on the item he's supposed to be advertising for. It's really yeah, 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 it's, that. that's fucking gold. Yeah. That shit was gold, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of the best <laughs> things I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's so funny. Um, what else? What else? 
Man. I'm trying to remember the fucking guy that would do amazing. He would be amazing at roast. <coughs> um, he's actually Colombian, but mm. a, a lot of people didn't know this. Just like Louis C.K. is Mexican, and a lot of people don't know that. But um, I'm trying to remember. He 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 passed away. Greg Gerardo. Yes. Yep. I really enjoyed Most his roast. Master. But master uh, yeah. roasting. Anyway. Yeah, he's always any, anybody that dealt with him. He's one of those people that's remembered very fondly and being like master of his craft. Was well, genius, right there. Yeah, genius. that guy. He, uh, I think he was a lawyer actually or an attorney. Yeah, I don't know what the difference is. Was, yeah. But uh, he quit and he became a stand-up. Yeah. Um. Anyway. But that, that's where you can see that that genius man because there's always a touch of madness. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I just that's that's the craft. I, I, when they go that far, yeah, to where it affects them. And you could physically. also tell like towards the like his later comedy he was like extremely real and he was extremely dark <laughs> and depressed but you could believe that it was a true yeah and i mean yeah I don't that's know. that's how people take your comedies <laughs> they're like like i don't know man he said some fucked up shit but it sounded kind of true it sounded so genuine the way he said it like yeah. that's the kind of shit i hear yeah like i have this joke about my dog dying like my mother ran over my dog mm -hmm. and it's true you know that's mm -hmm. not funny so, but he, like, it's, it's with me. And I think about that, um, even before I did stand up, how my mother ran over my dog. <laughs> and, but the thing is that, you know, with time, someone asks you, oh yeah, uh, I had a dog when I was, uh, five, but my mother ran over it. Um, at the moment it wasn't funny, but now it's kind of funny. Like, you know, she ran over. <laughs> I think that's part of the therapy yeah. with comedy. I know we all got our different levels of fucked up, especially comedians a lot. It's very rare you find a comedian that's like, yeah, my life was fucking awesome. Everything was sweet. Yeah. It's very rare. Um, I feel like because of the way comedy helps us interpret things and make them kind of like make them something to laugh at. I think there's like something therapeutic about that. Yeah, absolutely. Like, cause I, I tell jokes about, you know, horrible shit that happened in my childhood and stuff that no way back in the day yeah. would I have been able to process that yeah. the same way. Like, and I know. think even if you're not like, if, if you're not saying something that's true, um, like I've had days where I'm not having a good day or whatever, or I feel down. And then I go to an open mic and I say, you know, something fucking crazy that it's not true. Mm -hmm. But just because I went on stage, that that was that was the the therapy. Yeah. Is that how you say that word? Yeah, therapy. That I needed. <laughs> Even if I yeah. bombed, I'm like, okay, uh, whatever. Yeah. You know, that I needed that, and now I don't I don't I don't feel as bad as I did before. Um, that's why I was, I don't know, during the quarantine, I, I know you guys here in Killeen, you stay pretty active, yep. but I actually, yeah, I didn't do any stand-up for, I guess, two months, three months, mm -hmm. but yeah, something was missing, and even during quarantine, they started opening the mics, and I went to the mics, and I was like, okay, now, like, life is almost back to normal, just because I was doing mics, so that's cool. Yeah, I got that mic addiction. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely notice, um when I'm not performing regularly, I definitely feel different. Like it's, it's like I, I, I've told people, but like one of the things I learned recently, um, okay. So when I first moved over here, I was carrying a bunch of heavy shit in here, moving a bunch of fucking big ass furniture and shit. And I fucked my back up. And so when I fucked my back up, I just like stopped doing like podcasting or anything for like a month, like a whole month. I just wiped it off my calendar and I was like feeling depressed and shit and I couldn't figure it out. And then once I started the show back up, it's like, oh, there it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, or like when I got more active doing like stand up again, like, oh, there it is. Like, I need to be mm -hmm. constantly moving. Do you enjoy doing more podcasts or stand up? Um, I, enjoy, I enjoy all of it. I, I love doing these interviews, though, and really getting into people's heads and getting to know them and stuff. I, I feel like I get to connect with somebody for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like that helps on uh, a personal level, like just get to know somebody. And plus, it's a professional level. Like, you know, if I want to like fuck with somebody later, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, well, I know this about him now. Or whatever I don't know. It's, I'm weird like that. I guess get 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 like a pickup on people's energy and stuff. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm nosy. I guess. <laughs> like reading people. Um, but no, like overall, man. Um, what I've learned over the past couple of years uh, is, yeah, like anything creative, dude. I want to I want to like be directing film, uh, producing. I want to be doing stand up. So you want to? You're the whole deal. You want to do everything. Do everything. You're uh, Eddie Murphy. I, I want to do everything. Yeah. Uh, cool, like man. I'll tell you, like. Uh, 
whenever, like I said, when I initially got hurt or whatever, uh, I had been working out constantly and I'd lost a bunch of weight and stuff and was mm-hmm. doing really well. And I started putting weight back on and stuff. And really what inspired me to get moving again is I watched fucking uh, Kevin Hart's interview with Joe Rogan. <coughs> and just, and like I watched his, like, his thing on Netflix too or whatever. But like all the stuff this dude does. His last special? Uh, not not the special. I like that one. Not, not, it was better than well, the previous not, one. Not the special. It was like just like the the one that was kind of like a biography thing. It's kind of falling. Oh, mind. okay. Yeah, but like you, you you see what like how much like somebody like Hammer the Rock or somebody all of the stuff they cram into a day and are yeah. able to do uh, to create or be building on something productive. And that's something that I've taken a huge like a, a big cue from uh, as of late. And it's it's helped me actually feel better in a lot of ways. I've changed my perspective into. Just focusing on positive stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I said, like I got zero dollars in my bank account, right? Mm-hmm. But I have a fucking sweet ass house I just got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I absolutely. fucking I got fucking uh, a, a fucking cool show we're about to do for the charity thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm building a brand. I'm running a podcast. We're we're doing all kinds of stuff, dude. Like <laughs> yeah. I I have enough. I try to make enough pots on the stove at once to where say something goes awry or fucking something fails or whatever. Mm-hmm. I always have something else I can focus on. Yeah. So like okay. That sucks. Oh, well, come over here and then work on this. And I don't know, just like having that, that switch in mindset, I've, I've, I've been like 100 times more productive and just in a better mood overall. Good for you, man. I, I, I'm just so fucking lazy. That's, right. Well, that's, that's what I run into because I get here in the days like with the twins and stuff. And there's cleaning to do, and I'm fucking exhausted. And then there's other stuff I need to do, like edit and cut footage and shit. And it's like, it, it gets overbearing, dude. It really does. Uh, it gets overwhelming. Um, but I know that over time, as we build uh, and as we create that, you know, I'll eventually, things will settle out. Like the whole, like the whole thing with the house. Like, yeah, fucking sweet house or whatever, right? Because I grew up, like I grew up pretty poor and shit. Um, like not Venezuela poor, <laughs> like, <laughs> but I grew up poor. Um, but even now, like I'm, I'm happy, right? But I'm not content. I'm going to keep going. Like I w- I'm gonna eventually just give this house to my mom. It's like it's gonna be her house, and I'm gonna like go build some fucking huge compound out in the country somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> where, I can, where I can shoot my guns and stuff. <laughs> yeah, dude, I like it. Do drugs. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Like it's it's all it's all levels. It's all levels, and we're steadily we're steadily going up. We're steadily you know, steadily getting there. And I, I know a guy like you, like I said, like uh, you're very talented. Thank you. Um, if you decide to dabble in anything else like acting or anything like that, or try to do some skits or something, I think you should. I think I think that you would. I think you would crush it. Um, I think I would definitely try it. You know, I, <coughs> I usually like to try anything. Like you know, I've done like improv and stuff, but I improv's fun. Yeah, I hated it. Oh, <laughs> no, wait, I forgot. That's actually the first night we actually interacted. Uh, we did the the improv uh, roast battle thing over there at Cup of Joe's. Oh, that was improv. Oh, that's yeah. it. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, it was, no, it was, all right. It was I, roast. Part of it was roast. Part of it was improv. Okay, yeah. so I guess I have a different understanding about improv. Okay. The improv I'm talking about is where there's a bunch of, I guess, actors, improv mm-hmm. actors. Yeah. And then someone makes something up, and you well, have I, to go along. Yeah, I did that too. I did um, that over. <laughs> I hated that. Yeah. I there was a fake gun and I just grabbed it and fake <laughs> killed people because I wanted to get out of there. <laughs> I was Make like, "You're dead! You're dead! Don't wake up! I need to go! I want to go home! I hate this shit." <laughs> but uh, sure, man. I mean, if someone comes to me and they're like, "Hey, you want to act or whatever?" You know, I'm like, "Okay," because I'm lazy enough. Yeah. You know, I, I gotta force it. myself and be like, "Okay, I'll do it." But I really just want to do stand up. Um, and I, you know, maybe uh, there's people hearing like, oh, bro, you should fucking quit. <laughs> but uh, I don't care. No, you know, no, whatever. No, you're, def- you're definitely somebody I'll keep you on the on the short list of like whenever I start trying to put shows again and stuff. I'll definitely hit you up for sure on the short list. Thank you, Pat. No. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Uh, thank you for driving down. I know it's yeah. out of the way from Austin and whatnot. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, Joe Rogan asked me to do his podcast today, but I was like, no, I'm <laughs> meeting with Pat now. And you know, driving to clean. I've been getting that a lot recently. You know, people are just like, yeah, Rogan, Pat, no. Yeah. You know, like the distracted, the, the meme of the distracted boyfriend, like he's walking with his girlfriend. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like you're walking with Joe Rogan. There's Pat, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Speaking of which, um, we were going to try to hit an open mic tonight. Are you guys yes. still wanting to go do that? Yes. And which open mic is that? The the one that uh, 
Misia. Misia? Is that how you pronounce her name? I keep saying Misia. It might be Misia. I've, I've been saying Misia Chabert. Well, Misia. she's from uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. So, in Spanish, it's Misia. Misia. Yeah, I met Misia at OPA, the open mic in Austin. Yeah. And she was super nice. She's super nice. Oh, she's great, dude. She's she's just a fucking bundle of joy and love, I tell you. She's yeah. great. Um, you guys kind of didn't like her before you met her. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm no, she reached out to <laughs> me before I met I her. Just, yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm trying to start oh. something that didn't <laughs> exist. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> It's drama. Those fucking, <laughs> those Venezuelans, I tell you. Always <laughs> turning you. up shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it almost worked. It almost worked. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. We're yeah. going to cut this one short uh, so that we can hit that mic. and Sure. We can uh, do uh, another podcast some other time before a mic. Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I'll definitely have you back. Yeah, man. Um, so, uh, Francisco, what are your social media handles? Uh, where can people reach you at? And do you have anything uh, yeah. upcoming soon? Uh, so Instagram at CISCOMEDY, C-I-S-C-O-M-E-D-Y, C-I-S-COMEDY. Um, that's Instagram and also Twitter and uh, Facebook, Francisco Rincon, R-I-N-C-O-N. Um, coming up, I am doing Paramount Theater with Chappelle and Stubbs <laughs> Barbecue. Absolutely. Um, and that's it. I'm going to Miami, actually, on the 17th. A friend of mine is getting married. Ah, what a mistake he's about to make. <laughs> that's what I hear. <laughs> no, it's all the cocaine. Um, you make bad decisions, you know. I guess. I don't know. Mm. But, uh, yeah. Um, so I'm going to be in Miami until next year, and I'll be back here January 1st, ready for some action. Okay. <laughs> until next year. <laughs> this sounds so much further away when you say next year. <laughs> until nah, next legit, year. I thought he was talking about like, I was like, damn, that long? Oh, see, so yeah, it got him. It got him. No, so he, he took the bait. I did. I did. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. Next year. Yeah. 2021. If... if if there is a 2021, god damn, this thing's... Bad. I don't know. I heard, yeah. I heard uh, the aliens, actually. We're talking to the aliens. Well, Did you hear that? Inter- inter- you didn't hear that? I didn't hear we're talking to them. Yeah, like it's actually on NBC News and CNBC. Hmm. Like they made it legit. Like someone from Iran. Iran? No, Israel. That's a huge difference. Mm-hmm. But uh, one of those fuckers, <laughs> 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 they're uh, negotiating with aliens and yeah, they have like an agreement or something, but I don't know. That can't be true. Fucking Google it, man. I'm gonna, hold on. Hold Google on. that shit. You said Israel or Iran? Just put aliens uh, and that's it. <laughs> aliens, Google, news. All I saw was the aliens... Exist and Trump knows. That's what I saw. Look, look for NBC News or CNBC. Aliens. I found it interesting that uh, I saw it on CNBC, and that's a channel for business on like the stock market. That was weird. I was like, why are they talking about this? And then I saw it on NBC News. Hmm. So I'm like, okay, it's almost like seeing it in the New York Times. So, I don't know. I don't know. Who don't knows? Know. Whatever. We're all fucked. Doesn't matter. Um, you you voted for you clearly voted for Trump. <laughs> yeah, I can I can say I can tell it because of your face. It's uh, white no. and uh, slightly racist, but uh, that's fine. I voted for Trump too, mm. just because um, I really wanted that wall to be built. Mm. Um, mainly. Yeah, too ma- we have too many people here. Just kidding. I didn't vote. <laughs> we have too many people in Austin. I didn't vote. I didn't either. I was too busy with my kids. Yeah. My I don't know. I just feel like it's too much responsibility I'm because a, I'm a single parent of four. I couldn't get away. Dude, anyone? Fuck, fuck you I if you voted. had a problem with that. Suck you voted? Dick. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I voted for it's Kanye right, West. I, v- I voted for Kanye West. I didn't. No. I uh. Yeah, I I voted to um, ejaculate in somebody a few years ago, and so I'm just dealing with that. Cool. So that's, yeah, that's my that was my solution. It's a blessing, man. It's a anyway, uh, speaking of, well, how many Netflix specials can I get out of each you know child? You know, fucking. 
I mean, the Illuminati, they're taking, you know. Oh, you mean sacrifices. Yeah, sacrifices, oh, okay. of course. Uh, I thought you meant, like, cute stories. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, I meant murder. Wow, that's horrible. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Connor. It's got yeah, stuck. It ruined the illusion. It, it, it ruined it. It ruined. I couldn't even I do the thing. I checked out as soon as it happened. I was like, it's like, I was like it's, it's not, it's not cool at? anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, was it cool to begin with? I don't was, think it was. It was awesome at first, you know. Right. It's, it's it movie s- magic. That's where editing comes in. I'll be sure to edit it before like, it goes live. <laughs> it's like, yeah. But yeah. Right. Again, what is your social media handles and what do you have coming up? Um, Instagram at Twisted Individual. Uh, Facebook, of course, Connor King, Connor King the Second, Dark Twisted Entertainment. Uh, you can find me somewhere, uh, like you know, I, I I don't like to think of them as shows. They're shows. Like I got a show, like a legit show on the 18th, um, and the chi- the the one in Aust- Carpus Cove. Carpus Cove is it's, it's a showcase. I'm featuring, but I don't know if there's an opener. I don't. I'm not sure if there's an openness. I don't know that that works. And um, there's a Zoom mic coming up. I'll have more details about that on each platform. Uh, and the dojo, uh, and the Red River District next to Stubbs in Austin on the 17th. There's there's it's too much, man. But if you follow me on the platforms, you'll see. You'll see for sure. Staying busy. Sweet. Yeah. Staying busy. Yeah. I don't know if you have any followers in College Station. Yeah. No, I, I probably not. I, I don't even know if I have followers sometimes. Sometimes oh, okay. people check in, sometimes they and don't. And I was worried here. No, you shouldn't have to do Like, I was sitting over here fucking... <laughs> On that note, I'm going to do my wall joke. <laughs> uh, I'm sad that uh, Trump uh, didn't win this election because uh, that means I'm going to have to get rid of all my wall material, mm. the jokes, and the bricks. Yeah. Got him. Well, he, right. he brought him. He, he might still win. You never know. Yeah, you never know. It's okay. Yeah, Look, yeah. whoever wins, we're going to be... I say whoever wins. I mean, clearly Biden already won. But whoever the president is, we're going to be just fine. Look at Venezuela. I'm, I've been watching we're House fucked. of Cards, man. I've been watching no, House of Cards. We're going to be fine. That shit can get like tw- turned over just through manipulation and deception. So Yeah, I don't know. No. Anything could happen. Yeah. Kamala yeah. Harris may be the president. We don't, yeah, we don't I mean, know. I can see that coming. Yeah, when when Biden bites it, because he's an old fuck. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's a geriatric old man. But but That's insane. Um, but again, uh, I didn't mean to be so dead on the nose of the question earlier. I, I kind of fucking no, it's got okay. sidetracked in my brain. And actually, I'm pretty open minded about politics, like yeah. Trump or Biden. I, I really don't care. Sincerely, yeah, I don't I, care. I, <laughs> but I will say this: most people that I know. Mm. From Venezuela, they are Trump supporters Mm -hmm. because they see Republicans as Mm -hmm. anti-socialists, which is not the case because just (coughs) because you're a Democrat doesn't mean you're a socialist. And even if you're a socialist, that doesn't mean Venezuela is a socialist country because there's a problem. The problem is people say that or think that Venezuela is socialism, but that's really communism combined with straight up corruption and criminals Mm -hmm. absolutely which is what always happens with communism. yeah but they say socialism but it's not yeah and that's that's you know without getting too deep into it that's why i try to tell people like i support socialist programs i also support you know uh fucking people having room to make money and do everything that we do with capitalism except for that all that stuff needs checks and balances because it is abused and fucking human rights and all this other stuff gets Fucking all fucky, you know, it's mm-hmm. fucked up. So yeah, there, there's a, it's a tricky balance. But if you go to either extreme end, that's where things go bad because it eventually becomes full circle. You keep going all the way right, keep going all the way to the left. What happens? You eventually fucking meet in the yeah. middle, and you end up with some type yeah. of totalitarian, fucking crazy, violent, crazy regime shit. Absolutely. But I, I I I do like that here in America we have a very strong constitution. That is very important. Um, we can go talking for hours about this, but yeah. we're about to wrap it up. We are. So we can continue on another. Yes, Dang. we will. We will. We got sidetracked there. Thanks, Connor. Thanks a lot. I'd already gotten us out of the political I'm, hole. I'm just, just making my contribution. You took man. us right back down. Yeah, just making my contribution. Hey. Over. But I don't hate you. I love you. I love you too, Franks. Love Thank you guys. Thank Fra- you for having me here. Thank you so much for coming down, dude. Yes. Great show. Great show, Connor. Word, and, word. uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, 
All right. I mean, now, hey. Now I got to see where I... I need to remember where I parked my donkey. Sure. Yeah. Hey, but to all of you, um, yeah. This is Everybody Hates Eric. Go eat a bag of dicks. And I know you all do. See you next time. All right.